Now I call as our last presenter of the day, last but certainly not least, Petra Testen Korin, who is the editor in chief of the New Slovenian Biographical Lexicon and one of the researchers of the Institute of Cultural History. So, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gregor. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I would like to say that this presentation was not written only by myself, but also my co-authors, Barbara Strebent Svetina and Martin Groom. So, as we have already heard today, in the year 2023, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the New Slovenia Biographical Lexicon. However, the origins of the lexicon, as we know, it can be traced back at least a century earlier. It is true that the new Slovenian biographical lexicon continues and builds on the work of the Slovenian biographical lexicon, which has been published for the better part of the last century. And speaking of, of anniversaries, which um, last year marked the 100th anniversary of the founding of the archive of the Slovenian biographical lexicon. In 1922, work began in earnest of the publication of the first volume of the Slovenian Biographical Lexicon. In that year, a glossary, model biographical entries, and several articles in the media were published, in which the purpose of the lexicon was, pre was presented, basically still valid today, to present with, with reliable biographical facts the work of individuals who have contributed to the development of science, culture, and general development in Slovenian territory. In order to base the biographical entries on up-to-date information, the editorial board started sending questionnaires to the living personalities in the 20s. This was the first material to be stored in the then established archive. The, the archive was subsequently supplemented by material collected by the authors of the biographical articles for the purpose of writing and by documents obtained in the process of editing the biographical entries. Sending questionnaires to the living personalities is still one of the activities of the editorial team. These documents are stored in the archive of the Slovenian biographical lexicon which we are enriching so that it remains a treasure trove of material for researchers and interested public. You are looking at the representation of one of the archive documents, the questionnaire for living personalities, and next to it, there's a modern version of the questionnaire. The tradition of biography has been present in Slovenian territory for a long time. It is very rich, and at the same time, it is possible to draw meaningful red threads between the approaches, questions, and problems that have preoccupied biographers since the beginning. Of course, the structure of writing has also changed. One of the red threads of biography is certainly the need for the individuals who have distinguished themselves in one way, in one way or another to be remembered by the community in which they lived. In many cases, the individuals themselves have also made sure that this happened. Or, as you can read on the website of the Institute of Cultural History, where the new Slovenian biographical lexicon is based, that the lives and actions of people have been at the very center of interest for the past, probably since humanity has been telling stories to itself. It is thanks to those who have preserved the memory of the outstanding individuals who have written their life stories that collections of biographies, followed by biographical lexicons and other lexical or encyclopedic works, have been able to emerge. Today, we will begin with an overview of biography in Slovenian ter historical territory in the year 1575 when Janis Mandels opened a printing house in Ljubljana and, among other things, printed some biographical works. This, of course, does not mean that there were no records of people and their achievements before then. For example, the Chronicle of Counts of Celje, written in the 15th century in honor 
and in memory of a noble lord called Hermann of Celje is an important document for the Slovene region. But it was Gutenberg's invention of movable type printing that made it possible for works about remarkable people to reach a wide public. Today, this re revolutionary invention could be compared to the emergence of the digital world, which, with modern devices, is within reach and reaches everyone, and which, if used thoughtfully, offers unimaginable possibilities for humanities. Returning to the 16th century press, okay, we will begin by highlighting two works on Herbert von Ausberg, the governor and warlord of Carniola, published in 1575. In that year, the Turks shot the host of the war, warlord at the Battle of Budacko, pulled him from the saddle, murdered him, and beheaded him. The spear-pointed head, together with the head of the beheaded battle participant and Augsburg's relative, Friedrich of Vishnagora, were taken in procession to Istanbul, where they were embalmed and later sold to the relatives for a staggering 20,000 gold coins. The tragic death of the warlord prompted the later regional administrator and vice-domo at Carniola, Yuri Kissel, to write a lengthy eulogy about him. As you can see in the presentation, we gave it, he gave it a long title, The Glory of the Most Splendid Achievements, etc. This was the first secular bestseller published in Carniola, with two printings in Latin, dated 1575, and a translation into German dated 1576. The second work on Herbert von Ausberg was a funeral sermon with the biographical elements divided by the Ljubljana protest delivered by the Ljubljana Protestant preacher Christoph Spindler at Ausberg's funeral. After the first so-called secular bestseller and the publication of the funeral sermon, we will focus on the first collection of biographies in Slovenian territory. It was compiled and published by the polyhistor, draftsman, collector, and publisher, Janis Weikald Varvazor, in a monumental work entitled The Glory of the Duchy of Carniola in 1689. This first collection was entitled An Appendix to the Sixth Book, which includes some of the learned writers native to Carniola. The text consists of 57 biographical entries. Valvazor obtained the information for the biographical entries partly from the personalities he introduced, half of them was his contemporaries, and partly from the books they had written. In a short introduction, he justified the chronological arrangement of the biographies with an explanation which you can also find projected. To summarize, each entry usually describes one author. Two exceptions are, the first one, on Saint Cyril and Methodius, who are considered to be initiators and leaders of Byzantine missionary activity among the Slavs in Moravia and Lower Pannonia in the second half of the ninth century translators of the Bible and liturgical books into Old Church Slavonic and founders of Slavonic literature. Of course, they were not born in Slovenian territory, nor did they fit Valvas or label of writers at home in Carniola, but he included them in his collection because of their influence and contribution to the culture of the area. The second exception is the 56th entry in which he lists the published theses of nine Carniola noblemen. As examples, you have projected eighth and ninth Varvazor biographical entries on Christoph Spindler and Yuri Kissel, which were the first biographical writers to be featured in the second half of the 60th century and with whom we started the presentation. The biographical entries are therefore arranged chronologically from San Cyril and Methodius to Valvazor himself, who is presented in the 57th entry. The text on him is the only one with a title. 
contribution of Erasmus Francisius on the miscellaneous writings of the gentleman himself, the principal author of this work. Let me add one more piece of information which may testify to the silent companions of great men like Valvasor. The only entry with the title mentions Erasmus Francisi, a German jurist and polymath who few people know was Valvasor's colleague and co-author of the monumental book, The Glory of the Duchy of Carniola, of which the first collection of biographies in Slovenian territory just mentioned is an integral part. The next work we will focus on is a manuscript entitled The Ljubljana Public Library of the Charles College of Nobles, an outline of the Ljubljana Public Library which, in the spirit of the time, bears the year 1715 from the Virgin's birth. It is, one, it is the work of the jurist, scholar of ancient inscriptions, chronicler, and historian Janis Gregor Dolnicar, who, among other things, presented the life and work of the cultural, scientific, and artistic authors of Carniola. Dolnicar had already included 191 personalities in his collection and classified them by discipline into groups, so not chronicle, chronologically like Valvasor. Particularly interesting is the introduction to this work in which Dolnicer was among the first in Slovenian territory to ask the fundamental lexicographical questions. Who should be included in the lexicon? And of course, the problems of access to documents. In an alternative title to the book, which you also have projected, he summarized the purpose of the, the work. As a curiosity, Dolnicar also included his son, Alex Giga Dolnicar, among the important writers of whom he was extremely proud. To avoid any accusation of bias, he concealed his relationship with him. He omitted his real surname and his parents' details in his biographical entry. The biographical entry on, Giga, on Alex Giga can be viewed on the projection, it is particularly interesting, although proposedly not translated from English, because the two-part structure is already clearly visible. In the first part, information about his birth and that, his schooling, his work, and the reason why he was included in the selection, and in the second part, the inventory of his work, what he published and what remains in manuscripts. From the rich biographical reading in Slovenian territory in the 19th century, special mention should perhaps be made of the Syria publication Droptinice, Bread Drums, which was published under various names from 1846 to 1901. Biographies have been published in this publication over the years, usually in a special section with catchy headlines, which have changed over time, and you can see them in the projection. Among the most important biography writers was the founder of Droptinice, the bishop, poet, and national awakener, Anton Martin Slomšek, who was also the editor for two years and one of the main contributors to this annual collection until his death in 1862. In the 19th century, the so-called Wurzbach's lexicon took center stage. This biographical lexicon of the Austrian Empire, which was outstanding and important for Slovenians in many respects, came to life in the middle of the 19th century. Konstantin Wurzbach, an organizer, systematist, collector, and poet, and polyglot born in Ljubljana, designed and edited it to the last volume and compiled almost all the entries. Between 1856 and 1891, 24,254 biographies of personalities from the Austrian Empire were published in 60 volumes, which was monumental even by world standards at the time. Among them are many 
personalities, more than 2,000 from the Den, Carniola, Carinthia, Lower Styria, and Littoral. Although the lexicon favored mainly the German noble elite of the monarchy, it also provided the Slovenes with the first major, fairly complete and objective encyclopedic presentation of both writing and non-writing authors and other personalities and mainly noble families. The lexicon strongly influenced later Slovenian, Croatian, and other biographical lexicons. At this point, we have reached the 20th century, and with it, the Slovenian biographical lexicon. The pre predecessor of the new Slovenian biographical lexicon has an interesting prehistory. Already in the Austrian Hungarian monarchy, a Yugoslav encyclopedia was planned, as we already heard today. It was initiated by a retired Croatian general, Marko Cerljen, who in 1909 donated 20,000 crowns to the Yugoslav Academy of Sciences and Arts to publish the Yuzhnoslavenski Encyklopedijski Rechnik, I quote, which would represent the pinnacle of science today and would show the past and present of the lands inhabited by Croats, Serbs, Slovenes, and Bulgarians, end of a quote. Slovenian cultural workers were also involved in, in the preparation of this encyclopedia. The First World War put an end to the realization of this plan. During war, the original plan was reduced to the Hrvatski Biografski Riečnik, the tentative and only volume of which was published in 1916, right? <laughs> the work carried out for the encyclopedia, especially the glossary, was later used for the preparation of the Slovenian bi biographical lexicon. The century long tradition of Slovenian biographical lexicon has, in many ways, outlined the guidelines and the work of the new Slovenian biographical lexicon. And as we have seen, a valuable archive was founded 100 years ago, which is still active today. It is worth recalling that Otto Lutar, the director of Zerca Sazu and the project leader of the new Slovenian biographical lexicon, and Barbara Strebenz-Vetina, the longtime editor-in-chief, is, it is worth recalling what they both wrote in the introduction to the first volume of the lexicon 10 years ago. They pointed to the enviable tradition that has given the Slovenian biographical lexicon regardless of the social and political changes in the century of extremes, the reputation of an outstanding corpus of bio, 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 bibliographical information and ideologically uncontaminated present interpretations. Because the conception of the first edition of the lexicon was conceived in the 20s and the last volume was published in 91, Thus, more than a half century later, we can state that the Slovenian biographical lexicon was truly a reflection of a whole century of Slovenian history. Careful readers will find in it political, social, and linguistic changes, but also the methodological development of the various humanities. Finally, the new Slovenian biographical lexicon is not just a more or less arbitrary designed collection of biographies, but a Slovene national biographical lexicon which contains comprehensive and documented articles on prominent Slovenes and others of importance to Slovenes in any way, following the time and place independent guidelines of its pre predecessor, the Slovene biographical lexicon. At the same time, of course, it also reflects the specifics of the time in which it was itself created. The collaborators of the new Slovenian biographical lexicon are aware of the importance of an established and recognized research approach which results in biographical articles with verified facts and a structure comparable to the Central European type of biographical lexicon. In this way, we continue and build on the meticulous, oh, excuse me, sometimes extremely time-consuming and therefore particularly valuable work that was started in 
1920 by Ivan Slokar, a lawyer, historian, and banker, with his proposal to art historian, publicist, and later diplomat Isidor Zankar. At the time, the Cooperative Bank of Ljubljana provided financial support for the Slovene biographical lexicon. Alongside Isidor Zankar, the first editorial board consisted of the librarian, lexicographer, and translator Joža Glonar, the literary historian, member, and for some years president of the Slovenian Academy of Sciences and Arts, Franze Kidric, and the bibliographer, lexicographer, and literary historian Janko Schlebinger. As early as 1922, Schlebinger and his colleagues compiled a list of 2,000 335 names of personalities important in various fields of work or creativity. At the same time, the basis objective of the planned work was defined, which today would be classified as one of the basis guidelines, and which you have or you can read on the projection. Over the years, the editorial board of the Slovene Biographical Lexicon was headed by Isidor Zankar, Franz Xaver Lukman, Franz Kidrich, Alphonse Gespan, Franz Petre, and Joze Munda. They had to cope with the misrepresentation of, the, of individual fields of expertise, which was also the result of the professional orientation of the members of the editorial board and the authors of the individual groups of entries in the lexicon. One of the main reasons why natural scientists were underrepresented in the lexicon was the poorly developed history of the natural sciences and the consequent paucity of authors who could write entries on the personalities in the field, fields of natural sciences and medicine. The second editor of the lexicon, Franz Xaver Lukman, was, for example, the first to point out the imbalance of the lexicon's contents. The next major turn point was World War, I, World War II and its aftermath. Alongside personalities from overlooked fields of expertise, the new, expanded, and revised selection also includes important actors from the war that has just passed, but not all of them. The censor assigned to the lexicon by the interested officials of the new authorities excluded all those who were alleged to the to have collaborated with the occupation authorities and the biographies of the few individuals who did make it into the selection were scrutinized with particular care. After 46, the Slovenian Academy of Sciences and Arts took over the editorship. The selection of personalities and some contents were not subject to editorial policy but to everyday politicization the tone of which was set in the 50s by the then Minister of Science and Culture, Boris Zicherl. The latter did not stop at the objection of Josip Widmar, a literary and theater critic, playwright, translator, essayist, and politician who became president of SAZU in 1952. The biographies of theologians were the most frequent target of criticism, but conceptual issues also caused additional problems. The inclusion of the heroes of the national liberation struggle and other more or less important companions of post-war politics once again upset the balance of the lexicon, which could no longer be defined in an argumentative way. For this reason, the painstaking work of the editor and his closest collaborator, the historian Milena Ursic, should be particularly highlighted. Alongside the persistent authors of the articles, they are mainly responsible for the fact that even the four volumes of the second book, the last volume was published in 1952, have maintained the professional consistency at the, of the first. The same applies to the work of the successor of Franz Xaver Lukman, whether as editors of men or members of the editorial board. All of them have, con have continued to ensure the professional integrity of the text, and the last editor successfully opposed the idea of merging the Slovenian biographical lexicon with the Encyclopedia of Slovenia. 
Jožemunda, convinced Darko Dolinar, then head of the Institute of Slovenian Literature and Literary Sciences at Zeretsa Sazu, under which the lexicon was published, that the Slovenian biographical lexicon should be preserved in its original form. This decision, which was taken at Zaretsa Sazu in the early 19th, was the basis for the subsequent transformation of the section for biography, bibliography, and documentation of the Institute of Slovenian Literature and Literary Sciences into the Institute of Biography and Bibliography, which was established in 1999 and started operating in 2000. In 2005, in order to, to pursue a more ambitious research orientation and to raise the profile of its work both in scientific circles and among the general public, the name was changed again in the Institute of Cultural History. In 2006, in cooperation with SAZU, the expert council of the new Slovenian biographical lexicon was established, which developed the basis for the new edition of the lexicon. On the basis of the suggestions of the members of the Council and extracts from the Slovenian biobiographical bio database designed by Martin Grum at the Institute of Cultural History, a proposal for a glossary was drawn up. In the projection, you can see how many biographical entries were foreseen for each letter of the alphabet and how, how this number changes when looking at the printed volumes of the lexicon. Here again, many questions arise we are still facing today in the editorial editing committee. How to ensure the balance of the lexicon, the appropriate representation of each field of, of expertise, how to find suitable writers, what to do with those who do not want their data published, what to do when there are not enough resources for a biographical article, etc. Each time we prepare a new volume, the glossary is reviewed by the editors and external contributors who are experts in their respective fields. The guidelines for selecting personalities are followed and detailed instructions are provided for contributors to help authors and editors navigate the writing and compo composition of the texts. And, of course, just as important is the questionnaire mentioned earlier today, which is filled in by living personalities who we know or expect to be included in the glossary. The guidelines, instructions, and questionnaire are also available on the website of the Institute of Cultural History if you would like to take a look at them. On the projection, you can see the main guidelines that explain who is included in the glossary. I think this is the next. At the same time, the guidelines dictate a division into categories to allow for a pyramid pyramidal structure of the personality set. Categories A, B, and C are included in the book edition, while category D is published only in the electronic version. It is also worth mentioning that for still active personalities whose biography is changing, it is not possible to provide an entry that is not already out of date, incomplete at the time of publication and the evaluation of their work is not yet possible. This type of personality is published only online, where biographies can be updated. The book edition contains personalities who have completed their careers and whose contribution can be evaluated because of the distance in time. The book must be credible enough to be picked up by the reader in five or 10 years' time. Looking back to 2008, the expert council of the new Slovenian biographical lexicon decided on the electronic publication of the first lexicon, which was arranged by Petra Vide Ogrin and her colleagues at the Sazo Library. Thus, in 2009, the Slovenian biographical clearinghouse was conceived. The efforts for the out online presentation of the Slovenian biographical lexicon have created the conditions for a new Slovenian online biographical portal, which complements the printed version. The portal brings together entries from the Slovenian biographical lexicon, 
those that have been and will be produced within the new Slovenian biographical lexicon and also entries from the lexicon of Primorska region. Dr. Matija Ogrin will certainly tell you more about the Porta Slovenian biography tomorrow. Let me just give you some information related to the new Slovenian biographical lexicon. All biographical entries from the five volumes of the lexicon so far, 991 in total, are also published on the web portal. Approximately one in 10 articles written is now published only online. The total number of articles that are publicly available online is currently around 1,300. This number seems high in relation to the number of articles published in the printed version. It includes entries created for the new volume, for the letter D, entries for other letters of the alphabet, which the online version of the lexicon allows, and entries placed online due to the pyramidal categorization. On the Slovenian biographical web portal, users can read one or more articles on more than 8,000 personalities and 124 families. All entries written for the new Slovenian biographical lexicon have been edited. They are therefore a reference for other, especially lexical works, both in print and online. It is the wish or ambition that the biographical entries in the online version would gradually be more richly illustrated with pictures and other material, portraits, works, musical presentation, maps, etc., and that the cross-references and search options would also reveal aspects of the life and work of personalities that are more difficult for the reader to extract from a printed version. After all, this is what the work carried out by the Intervia project offer us. I wanted to conclude with an example that shows how welcome the web is, um, an example of how despite our diligent work at the editorial board, fact sometimes gets the better of us, and how important the public response is, but let me conclude here, and thank you very much for your attention.